Hello YouTube, um, hopefully we've got a nice little video here for everybody to have a look at. What we've got here is a bit of Cold War, or and, uh, really pre-Cold War technology, uh, which is a Radiac um, survey meter number two. Um, it's essentially a radiation, radiation monitor. Um, it was uh, issued to the, um, the Royal Observer Corps in the UK. Um, from around about 1955 and was used apparently up until about 1982 but we have evidence that it might not actually be true it might be a little bit further on than that um, so this is, uh, belongs to a very good friend of mine Phil who's here as well hi Phil hi um, he's going to let me uh, take this apart and uh, we'll see what it's like inside and we can talk a little bit about it Right, so this was um, used by the Royal Observer Corps. This was, um, um, I don't know how many of these were actually issued, but I guess there was probably quite a few. Um, well, the, um, the, the serial numbers are, are running into the tens of thousands, so I think they, they it was certainly widely, widely used. It was apparently the main uh, radiation detector um, that, that the military, the British military used for for a period of about 30 years, so uh, yeah, I think there were quite a few made. So it's built like you wouldn't believe. It's a huge, great big lump of um, cast. Is it cast aluminium? It's cast aluminium. Yeah, yeah. And this, um, and it comes in this um, this very, very solid. Um, it's I think PVC coated fabric uh, with a toughened glass window on there um, and it's got its uh, service documentation and uh, very very brief um, operating instructions there um, yeah very brief Oh yeah, service record, but um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, this has got a date of 7th of August 1987. You've got a uh, carrying handle. Yeah, 29928, so yeah, there was plenty of these made, wasn't there? Yeah, there are a number of um, of user serviceable um, components on this unit. Um, here we've got um, two of the four batteries can be removed under these two plates here, um, and then around the around the front uh, we've got um, this this component here that's removable. This is the lamp for the um, lamp for the screen. Um, not quite sure what that one is. Um, so there's um, very little to actually operate on this. Um, it's just two controls, three if you include the uh, the zero. Um, let's see if we can get this on camera. So you've got on, on with lamp and battery test. Nice big clunking switches. And the range select. Which does it actually. So did you say these were D cells? Yeah, as far as I know, they're just standard D cells that go in there. No idea. It goes in there. It's just a hole.
so that's the um, the battery holder for the uh, 15 and 30 volt uh, batteries uh, that run the uh, the electronics inside. Uh, the, yeah, there is a manual for it somewhere that that shows you which which way around. I suppose. Yeah, I remember be. seeing batteries that used to have those um, single studs at each end. Yeah. smell that smell of old military equipment oh that smells amazing <laughs> <laughs> so what we can see inside there yeah. is the um, lamp for the display there. That, that makes contact with some with that contact there. the other uh, component there um, that is uh, a silica gel um, pack and uh, a moisture meter um, which changes colour on the indicator on the end when it's absorbed a certain amount of moisture. Well then it um, needs to be replaced. Yeah, so um, before you could actually calibrate this and use it in the field you'd need to um, uh, fit some new silica gel packs inside to to dry it out and replace that um, that moisture indicator at the end, which I I understand should be blue um, when the unit is um, is ready for use. Um, at the moment, it's pink, um, indicating that it's absorbed uh, more more moisture than is allowable for the for the unit. Okay, let me look at this lovely bit of kit. Um, you got the uh, opposite side to the battery compartment. Um, That's off. On. So that's on. That would be on with the lamp. That's, that's battery test. Battery yeah. test. And then off. It's lovely how they've uh, got all this. It's almost like crochet around the around the wires to to manage them. So on the other side of that, you have the range switch and the uh, calibration pot, which is accessible just here. Um, you got the top of the valve just poking out there. And then three precision resistors, which are themselves encapsulated in glass. And I guess this is less precision stuff here. And finally, the, the big box is the actual ion chamber. So we'll just take off the top cover of this. Uh, these are uh, high ohmic resistors uh, which have been encapsulated in, uh, in glass for stability. Uh, you can see one there is uh, 1.7 to the power 8 or 170 mega ohms. The valve itself, um, this, this little valve here, um, is just a very very simple triode um, valve. So you've just got a, a heater in there, um, two electrodes, that's it. This unit has been designed so that it could work in any part of the world. So it will have to be designed to be reliable in everything from um, Arctic uh, freezing temperatures right up um, to you know working in the desert. That is operated by the range select to. Yeah. 
So this is the uh, cover to the, the ion chamber. Um, we're not really sure how this is actually working, but um, the the inner part in here, um, this here, and also this piece of uh, plastic, which actually has metal embedded in it, is all part of the circuit. So there's obviously some... Um, voodoo trickery going on so uh, not being an expert on this kind of thing this is metalized plastic Yeah, the, the uh, electrode inside there seems to be aluminium. Okay, last uh, little bit of the box is um, the beta window, which is uh, located under under this panel here. Yes, that plate just pops off that, and we've got this uh, heavy grey aluminium plate which just swings back and forth there uh, to go over the uh, the window to, uh, to the to iron chamber. So with, with it in position like that, it would that will block any beta radiation coming through here. Um, so just flipping that that way that. Um, exposes the window there which will allow the beta radiation through. I think um, the general thinking is that uh, this port here which runs right through into the actual um, iron chamber is uh, possibly used for when it was serviced so um, obviously these have to be kept moisture free um, so if it's been opened, serviced and then reassembled there's, you're going to have to um, evacuate all the moisture out of the system. Now I wonder whether there might be something that goes in here, a heater or maybe some extra desiccant or something to help speed up the process. Well that's the uh, Radiac survey meter. Uh, thanks to Phil for um, letting us take it apart and see the insides. Um, if anybody has any additional information on this this meter, uh, please leave them in the comments, uh, we'd be all interested to know. Um, and like and subscribe if you want to see more like this. Thanks for watching.